Hello everyone, so here with a new video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to cover some basic topics about NetApp Metro Cluster. And this is the agenda for, for this video. We are going to have a theoretical class about Metro Cluster introduction and purpose. We are going to check mediator, mouse, and some basic, really basic considerations about Metro Cluster. Talking about the laboratory exercises, we are going to have an overview about current elements of the lab and uh, talking about the exercise we are going to run an unplanned switch over uh, which counts with a metro cluster switch pack for the rollback this is for a real dr scenario and the second activity will be plan switch over for test uh, well this is this scenario is for testing dr capabilities and for any kind of maintenance plans all right Let's move to the, the theory. Okay, Metro Cluster introduction. There is an increased need to provide both near zero recovery time objective and zero recovery point for business critical applications and data. And you know, like uh, high sensitive databases or probably a BDI environment. This need demands high availability at both and for compute and storage layers. Metro Cluster is a scalable solution that provides high availability at the cluster, at the local cluster level and cross-site synchronous disaster recovery. Uh, Metro Cluster purpose. At the local level, redundant nodes are members of a cluster HA pair. Cross-site TR is provided through an HA pair at another location. Well, at this point, this seems like a traditional snap mirror DR solution, but here comes the keyword. The two clusters are pure and they provide bidirectional. This is the keyword, bidirectional DR, where each cluster can be the source and backup for the other cluster, and vice versa. Mediator. When a site failure occurs, Metal Cluster helps automate a switchover of storage services to the remote site. Using ONTAP Mediator, it is possible to have switchover occur automatically without interrupting access to a storage. So this will perform a really smooth transition from local cluster to the remote cluster data services uh, with a really smooth operation. That's a song. Mouse. And when a node detects a site failure report and a switchover, it takes a step to confirm that the switchover is appropriate and if so, performs the operation. A mouse means mediator assist or automatic unplanned switchover. And it is only initiated in the following scenarios. Both sync mirror, mirroring and DR mirroring of each node's non-volatile cache is operating and the cache and mirrors are synchronized at the time of the failure. This means that we have to have a really sync operation uh, to grant uh, the zero RTO and RPO. None of the nodes at the surviving site are in takeover. If a site disaster occurs, it uh, means a failure of all nodes at the same time. Beginning with ONTAP 9.13.9, if the above conditions are met and a fan or hardware failure initiates an environment shutdown, for example, a power supply unit, NVRAM battery, or service processor heartbeat failure or high or low temperature, it will take to the automatic unplanned switchover. A uh, mouse is not initiated in the following shutdown scenarios. You initiate a shutdown, for example, when you halt the nodes and you reboot the nodes manually. Some considerations, these are really basic con considerations for Metro Cluster. Talking about the IP interfaces, they are just created by the command Metro Cluster Ooh. configuration that settings interface create. Uh, these interfaces are not going to be available with the typical command network interface show command as it is used to manage for a traditional DR solution, you have to always go to the Metro Cluster command. Talking about a snap mirror consideration, a snap mirror SBM disaster, is, uh, disaster recovery support on Metro Cluster config running versions of NetApp, sorry, of ONTAP 9.5 or later. So the snap, uh, SBM snap mirror was not supported uh, prior to 9.5 version. Here comes the reference of the previous slides. These are really helpful documents from NetApp Vendor. 
All right, let's move to the lab. So here's the lab, and we are going to open the Firefox web browser. So let's open the cluster one uh, through the GUI system manager. And I will also prepare uh, the CLI for the cluster two. Uh, remember all the passwords that we regularly use, admin and NetApp web. All right, uh, we are in the dashboard of the cluster one. Here we can see that we are running the version 9.11.1. And if we scroll down to the Metro cluster section, here we can see the old cluster. If we hover the mouse over the green check mark, we are going to see that the Metro cluster is active, systems are healthy, and the mediator is also with a green check mark. Let's open up uh, this Metro Cluster Health interface. And here we can see that the components of the Metro Cluster that they are looking good. For the node network interface, tier cluster, connection, volume, and configuration replication. If we want to see the same from the cluster two, but uh, through CLI, uh, let's run the commands. The first, the very first command that I used to run is a version just to make sure that we are running both clouds are on the same level, 9.11.1. Now let's run a metro cluster show command. If you want to see more uh, information about the nodes that compose this metro cluster configuration, you can run metro cluster node show command. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, metro cluster is enabled through a cluster peer solution. So if I run a cluster peer show, here we are going to see the remote cluster, cluster web. It's really important to mention that, as, a, uh, as I mentioned before, that uh, this runs above the SVN. So if we run a vServer peer show command, it is not going to display anything. Uh, this is looking good. This is how it should work. If we go to the uh, system manager and go to the storage VMs, we are going to see the, uh, the other side VM, but you are going to see it as a stop. So you are going to see a change in the next exercise. So let's go back to the CLI. And the next command to run is the Metro Cluster Check Show. That is going to to display us uh, the same components that we just saw here from the Metro Cluster uh, interface from the GUI. So yep, here we, we here we can see the same components. No leads, configuration, so everything is looking good so far. All right, uh, let's have a look on to, into the power controls of this laboratory. And I will also show you the vCenter. I will bring the, the user. Administrator at demo.netapp.com. Let's try again. Let's try again. Uh, just a second. All right. Now that we see that it's working, it's loading, and let's go back to the power controls. So here we have our site A with cluster one information and ESX one. And if you take a look into the site B, you are going to see uh, two nodes that belongs to cluster 2 and the ESX2. 
All right, so let's expand the options here to data center. Then the ESX closer that belong here, and here we have ESX1, ESX2, and here we have a virtual machine, VM1. I will power up this VM, and here we can see that uh, its host is the ESX1. All right. Okay, unplanned switch over activity. You simulate a site failure on site A, cluster 1, perform a switch over and monitor the switch over of site A, cluster 1, operation to site B. Okay, so we are going to use the power controls. Let's move back to the scene. Here we have the power controls. And let's run a shutdown for the site A. We are going to hit the shutdown shut down gas button here. And we will wait a couple of minutes. I will pause the recording just to make it possible for you. All right. So I have refreshed um, the site A status. So everything in the site A is powered off now as the both nodes and the ESX host. Now let's open the, the closer to GUI. Let's log in with admin. And we are going to scroll down a little bit to the Metro Cluster section in the dashboard. Let's wait a second to get this information updated. It's coming up. All right, so here we can see a red mark in the clusters. If I cover it, here we can see that the metro cluster connection cannot be reached. Also, we are going to see the red, the red alder for the mediator. And in order to get the, the data back serving or, or VM1, we have to hit here and switch over remote data services to the local side. So the remote data services is the cluster one, and we are going to uh, remote and serve that data from the local cluster, cluster two. If we have a look into the ESX uh, overview, we are going to see that the ESX one is gone. It's not responding because it's turned off. All right. Let's hit the switch over operation. Uh, here comes a warning. Let's hit OK. And it's coming with a message that determining if a negotiated switch over is possible. Let's wait a couple of seconds here. Okay, the negotiated switch over was not initiated. Let's click on view details. And let's take a look into this alert. All right, so basically this alert is mentioning that uh, the cluster one is unreachable, the IP addresses are not available. Cluster two reports that its partner cannot be reached. If cluster one is down, initiate an unplanned switch over to move that service to cluster two. Let's hit uh, the button initiate unplanned switch over. All right, now the action is displayed here, it's performing an unplanned switch over. Let's wait a couple of seconds. So now you can see a green arrow means that data services are switched over from cluster 1 to this cluster, to the local cluster. 
Now you can see that the status has changed. Let's hover it. Let's hover over again. The network cluster is in switch over mode. This cluster is active and serving data. The partner cluster is down for plan maintenance. So as we all know, this is not a plan maintenance, but it is serving the data. Okay, so how can we make sure that everything is up and running for the VM1? So let's have a look into the ESX cluster. And here we can see that um, this is not refreshed yet. And this is pointing to the down host. Let's refresh it here. And, and this VM is disconnected. Uh, all right. I just refresh it again. And here we can see that, um, that the VM was unavailable. It took some seconds to, to get back up and here we can see that now its host is the the side b host the esx2 host all right now let's have a look into the cluster 2 and as you remember uh, we went into the cluster 1 storage vms available there and you saw that uh, the metro cluster svm was stopped but now in this scenario, for a switch over, here we can see that now the, the Metro Cluster SVM is up and running. So this is the one that is serving the data. And this is the one that is providing the data stored to the ESX host, uh, the host number uh, two. Okay, so this Metro Cluster functionality may take some time to get the engineer to get a result, to get uh, the data center solution there probably is a shoot down because of an environmental energy power supply uh temperature as we mentioned before so uh it is safe to to keep running this configuration but uh what is going to happen if we're going to get back to our original state let's take a look to simulate this we have to go back to power controls and power on again Let's hit the button and let's wait a couple of seconds here. Let's hit the refresh button. And I am going to monitor the process of booting up, opening a node session. It takes some seconds to respond. Okay, here we can see that the system is putting up as any regular on that system. Let's wait a couple of seconds. Put up process is about to complete. I'm going to minimize this window. I will monitor with the, with the ping. Cluster IP address is coming up. And here we have also the, the login. Login available just right now. So this is that cluster one is up and running. I'll minimize this window and this window again. Let's have a look into the cluster two. Let's move to dashboard then scroll down to the metro cluster. All right, here we can see that the uh, icon status has changed. Let's hover over it. It mentions that the metro cluster is in switchover mode and the partner cluster is up. Let's click on the details. And here we can see that the switchover was completed, the operation that we performed just some minutes ago. And the switch pack was also completed. So right now there is a background process running there. 
uh, to make sure that we can switch back operations. So let's wait a couple of seconds here. Okay, I want you to make sure that this message is, is there, that the cluster is up, and this is about to change. I will try a uh, refresh. Let's see if this helps, because probably this uh, this operation used to take some minutes and sometimes it is not displayed by the web browser. Let's log in again. Or the cluster is up. Let's wait a couple of seconds here. Ha! Huh. Now the message is different. Uh, it mentions that this cluster is active and serving data. The partner cluster is ready to take back data services. This is the objective that we are looking for. Let's click on the details. And we are going to validate uh, that this each over was completed. Yep. Uh, this is the information that we were, the confirmation that we were looking for. The auto healing of the local tier was completed, and for the root local tier was completed. So this healing is okay for the cluster one. Let's close this um, this message and hit of the options for the cluster to switch back remote data services to the remote side. Okay, let's hit it. This is a warning message. Partner storage VMs will transition to cluster one. Are you sure to continue? Let's click on OK. So you are going to perform this uh, switch back. When you are 100% sure that you are safe to run operations back to your original, ori original site. You can see that now the green arrow is pointing, pointing to the cluster one. Here we can see the message that our services are being switched back to cluster one. All right, now it, it is updated to Metro cluster is active and everything is looking good. Let's log in into the cluster one. I will go to the dashboard again. And it's looking good right here. Let's go back to cluster two before we run any operation into the ESX. Let's go to storage, then storage VMs. And now we will see a change into the Metro Cluster SVM. Here we can see that the Metro Cluster SVM is a stop as it is at as usual as it is used to be. If we go to the ESX cluster, here we can see that the green, sorry, the red mark is gone for, for the ESX cluster in site A. And now if we take a look into the BM1, now uh, its storage is still coming from the ESX2, but now we can run a smooth migration. If we right click, then migrate. Let's click on next and go to the default settings. Let's click on ESX1 to return it back to its original host. Then click next and next. Here comes the summary before the operation. Let's click on finish. All right, it will take a moment to get updated. Now here we can see the update. It belongs to ESX1. Okay, this is the end for the uh, for this very first activity. All right, plan switch over. In this activity, you act as an IT administrator that is tasked with testing the disaster recovery between sites. This scenario also applies for maintenance schedule activities. Okay, for this activity, we are going to go back to our laboratory.
and I am going to organize my tabs. All right. So in this scenario, we can we are going to have an schedule maintenance. We are going to test the DR um, capabilities. So we can we are going to perform this for again for our site A ESX one. In order to do that, we uh, first we have to migrate or VM1 again to the ESX2 host. Here we select the ESX2 and click on next, next, and finish to run the operation. Now, please remember that these activities are supposed to be run in a control and approve maintenance window. So everything and everyone is aware about this activity. All right, now it's pointing to the ESX2 host. And let's continue. Now we are going to shoot down the host, the ESX1 host, right click. And then power shoot down. For a reason, we can put maintenance and OK. Okay, we, here we can see that the VS3 has been updated with the red warning. Now let's move to the Metro cluster. Now for this scenario, we are going again to the cluster 2. Let's go to dashboard. Scroll down slowly. And select the option here switch over remove data services to the local site let's click it click ok for the warning and now is determining if an initiated switch over is possible let's wait a second At this point, I'm curious about uh, the VM1. I'm going to log in here. OK, it is not responding because the data store is not available yet. OK, this is how it's supposed to work. Now here we can see that uh, the VM1 is responding. If we take a look into the, to the Metro cluster, it mentions that data services. Oh, it updated. The Metro cluster is in switchover mode. This cluster is active and serving data. The partner cluster is ready to take back data services. All right. So let's go to the storage VMs. And we are supposed to see here that both SVM, the local SVM, and the Metro cluster SVM is running. And that's the reason why uh, the VM1 suddenly respond after some time. Yep, it is looking good. Yep, this is a linear machine responding properly. So with this plan scenario, you are going to be able to test your disaster recovery services. This is it. Thanks for watching.